Good morning, everyone. I am Ganeshwar from Nature Conservation Foundation, working in a project called the Early Bird. Early Bird is a non-profit initiative which aims to introduce nature and birds to children through games and various other activities. I welcome you all for the second part of Are You a Wise Quacker? A quiz for young birders conducted by Early Bird jointly with the Delhi Bird Foundation. Before we start, there will be a set of instructions given. Please follow the instructions carefully to participate and have a chance to win the quiz. Along with me, my colleagues, Misha, Garima, Abhisheka, and Subhadra have also joined for the session today. Let's have a look at the instructions now. Participants are requested to rename yourself as the exact name which you have written in the registration form. Please make sure you do this. Only then we will be able to compile your answers and announce the results. This will be a competitive quiz. Unlike the part one, which was non-competitive, in this part two, winners will be announced once the quiz is over or a little later. Once we start the quiz, your chat box will be directed to quiz answers. You can reply only to quiz answers privately. Please make sure that you post your answers only to quiz answers. Also, you need not type any words for the answers. You will have to just type the alphabets which will be given in the options. The answers which you send first will only be considered. If you send option A and immediately option B, that answer will be considered invalid and no points will be awarded. So in this quiz, we have five rounds in total. Each of the rounds will have 10 questions and it will be for 200 points in total. Please make sure that you send your answers only to quiz answers in the chat box. To facilitate you through the quiz, we will also have a test round for which no points will be awarded. At the end of test round, if you have any queries, you can direct to us. All the questions will be of multiple choice and you are requested to post the answers only just a single letter alphabet. There will be four options, option A, option B, option C and D. You are requested only to type the correct option as either A, B, C or D. Do not type any words while answering the quiz. So now we will move to the test round. The test round has no points. It is to facilitate you through the quiz. 
comfortably. All right. What is the name for the journey made by many birds between their summer and winter homes? Option A, predation. Option B, molting. Option C, migration. Option D, immigration. So you will have to type only the option to quiz answers. If you think option A is correct, you will have to send only the alphabet A. If you think option B is correct, just send the letter B to quiz answers. Do not type the full answer such as molting. That will not be taken into account and the answer will be considered invalid. This is a test round. You can type your answers to quiz answers now. We will move to the next test question. So the answer for the question is option C. So if you have typed only C, that is the right way to answer the entire quiz. The second test question, which of the following bird catches fish in its pouch like a fishing net? Option A, pelican, B, kingfisher, C, cormorant, D, heron. You are requested only to type the alphabet as the answer to quiz answers. Do not type as heron, cormorant in full words. Please type only the alphabets as the options to quiz answers. This is how the entire quiz is going to be conducted. So the answer is option A, pelican. Which of the following bird catches fish in its pouch like a fishing net? Uh, also one more instruction, Ganeshwar, uh, that after the quiz master announces that time is up, if you respond after that, then your answer yes. will not be considered. Yeah. For each question, a certain amount of time will be given within which you will have to type the answer and send it to quiz answers. Once I say time's up, if you send the answers after that, it will not be taken into account. You will be given sufficient time to type the answers to quiz answers. So Ganeshwar, some, some people are asking how, many, how much time for each question. Okay, so uh, it will be 15 to 20 seconds. So depending on the rounds, it will vary between 15 to 20 seconds. So officially we are moving on to the are you a wise Part two, a quiz for young birders conducted by Early Bird jointly with the Delhi Bird Foundation. I welcome you all and all the best to all the participants. Let's go to the round one and let's move on to question one. Which of the following features of a bird's body, bird's body structure, is key? To it being able to fly. Option A having no liver or kidneys. Option B having zero body fat. C having no bones only cartilage. D 
having hollow bones. Your time starts. Your time's up. Let's look at the answer. Which of the following features of a bird's body structure is key to it being able to fly? The correct answer is having hollow bones. Birds have hollow bones which help them to fly efficiently over long distances. Okay, let's move on to question number two. The two primary functions of feathers are option A, flight and insulation, B, flight and coloration, C, insulation and protection, D, none of the above. Your time starts. Time's up. Let's look at the answer. The correct answer is option A, flight and insulation. The two primary functions of feathers are flight and insulation. Let's move on to question three. Why do vultures have Featherless heads. Option A to prevent overheating. Option B to remain clean while eating. C the feathers are lost while fighting with each other. Option D to look into tree holes easily. Your time starts. Time's up. Let's have a look at the answer. The correct answer is option B, to remain clean while eating. Vultures have featherless heads so that they can remain clean while eating carcasses. Let's move on to question number four of round one. What is the approximate length an owl can rotate its head in one direction? Option A, 360 degrees. Option B, 180 degrees. C, 90 degrees. And D, 270 degrees. Your time starts. Your time's up. Let's have a look at the answer. The correct answer is 270 degrees. It is the approximate length which an owl can rotate its head in one direction. All right, let's move on to question number five. How many species of penguins live at the North Pole? A, five species. B, 13 species. C, seven species. And D, zero species. The time starts. Time's up. Let's have a look at the answer. The correct answer is zero because 
there are no penguins at the north pole all the penguins live in the southern pole near the antarctic coasts that is the correct answer so there are no penguins at the north pole let's move on to question number 6 Birds like eagles fly at great heights with the help of thermal air currents. What is that type of flight called? Option A, flapping, B, soaring, C, gliding, and D, hovering. Your time starts. Time's up. Let's have a look at the answer. The type of flight which birds use to fly in the thermal air currents is called soaring. Let's move on to the next question. Which of the body parts do birds not have? A. Toes. Option B. Teeth. C. Spine. And option D. Ears. Your time starts. Your time's up. Let's look at the answer. The correct answer is option B, teeth. Birds do not have teeth. That is the body part which birds do not have. Okay, let's move on to question number eight. Why do birds fly in the form of V shape? Option A, to conserve energy and fly longer. Option B, to get better visibility of surroundings. Option C, to maximize the search for food. Option D, to get enough oxygen while flying. Your time starts. Time's up. Let's see the answer. Birds fly in the form of V shape to conserve their energy and fly longer. Flying in the form of V shape helps the birds to minimize the wind drag while flying. And rather than flying alone, if birds fly in the form of V shape, they can conserve their energy and travel long distances. Let's move on to question 9. Humans have four chambered heart how many chambers does a bird's heart have option a 3 b 4 c 5 
ऑप्शन डी सिक्स your times up let's see the answer it's exactly the same humans have four chambered heart and likewise birds also possess a four chambered heart let's move to question 10 of round 1 this bird was mentioned in the alice in wonderland story and was last sighted in mauritius it is extinct now what is that bird option a passenger pigeon option b pink headed duck option c dodo option d mova Okay, so it seems like Ganeshwar had dis has disconnected. Uh, yeah, maybe so, network issue. Yeah, we'll wait for him to get back. Yeah, for now, uh, the time's up for this question. Yeah, Ganeshwar's back. It seems. the bird was mentioned in the alice in wonderland and was last sighted in mauritius it is extinct now what is that bird option a passenger pigeon option d moa ganesh sir already done Let's... and we had already said time okay. was up but you need to uh, oh, move okay, it to okay. full screen yeah the correct answer is dodo the round 1 is completed now let's move on to round 2 which will be a fact or fiction round let's move on to question number 1 of round 2 birds have the most highly developed vision in the animal kingdom a fact option b fiction your times up let's see the answer yes it's a fact that birds have the most highly developed vision in the animal kingdom let's have a look at question number 2 birds which probe for food have many sensory pores near the tip of the bill a fact b fiction your times up let's see the answer yes it's a fact that birds which probe for food in the mud have several sensory pores Let's move on to question number three. 
in round two. All birds have odd number of tail feathers. As you know, birds have tails. The number of feathers in a bird's tail is odd number. Is it a fact or fiction? Your time's up. Let's see the answer. It's a fiction. All birds have even number of tail feathers. If you look at this picture and if you count it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So all birds have even number of tail feathers. Let's move on to question number four. The name of birds can be easily seen. The knee of birds can be easily seen. Your time's up. The answer is fiction. We cannot really see the knee of the bird. What we see is really the ankle and not the knee. Let's move to question five. Similar to humans, the upper jaw or the maxilla of birds is immovable, which means the upper beak of the bird is also immovable, just like humans, whether it's a fact or fiction. Your time's up. Let's see the answer. It's a fiction. Birds can move their upper mandibles. However, humans cannot move their upper maxilla. Yeah, upper jaw. So, let's move on to question number six. Birds don't transmit coronavirus. A fact, B fiction. Birds don't transmit coronavirus. Your time's up. Let's see the answer. Yes, it's a fact that birds don't transmit coronavirus. Not only birds, no animal, including bats. Bats have been called the carriers of COVID-19, but it is a very false statement. No bird or no animal, including bats, is found to transmit the COVID-19 to humans. Let's move to question number seven. Birds live in their nests throughout the year. A fact. B. Fiction. Time's up. Let's see the answer. Yes, it's a fiction. Birds do not live in their nest throughout the year. 
and nest is only used for raising the young. Let's move on to question number eight. In all the bird species, males are more brightly colored than females. A fact, B fiction. Your time's up. The correct answer is fiction. No, all male birds are not brightly colored. In some species, there are female birds which are more brightly colored than the males. For example, a pair of greater painted snipes in the picture where the female is more brightly colored than the male. Question number nine. There are no flightless birds in India. A fact, B fiction. Time's up. Let's have a look at the answer. Yes, it's a fact. There are no flightless birds in India. All birds which are found in India can fly. Let's move to question 10. It has been proven that birds are affected due to the radiation from mobile towers. A. Fact. B. Fiction. Time's up. And the correct answer is, it's a fiction. So far, there is no conclusive scientific evidence to prove the claim that birds are being affected due to the radiation from mobile towers. We have successfully completed two rounds. We have three more rounds. Now, let's move on to Round number three, and that will be match the following. Let's have a look at question number one in round three. Match the given bird with the feet. Option A, option B, C and D. There are four different kinds of feet given and you can choose either one of the options which you think is correct. Your time's up. The correct answer is option B. So the bird in the picture is Eurasian coot or common coot. They have lobed feet, which is a better adaptation for the bird in the wetlands. Let's move on to question number two. Now match the feet with the bird. A. Eagle, B. Duck, C. Woodpecker, D. Sparrow. Your time's up. The correct answer is option A. It is the feet of an eagle. Eagles have very sharp talons to grasp their prey and tear into it. Let's move on to question number three. Match the feet of the bird with the correct habitat.
your time's up. Let's see the answer. The correct answer is option C. The given feet is of the bird pheasant tail jasana. The slender and longer toes of the bird help it to walk on the floating vegetation by distributing the weight of the bird equally on the floating leaves. It is a feature the bird has adapted to live in the wetlands. Move on to question four. Match the habitat with feet. There is a habitat given and you have to match either of the four options. Your time's up. Let's see the answer. It's option D. It is the feet of a green. It helps the greaves to paddle through water, dive in deeper and push the water. It is a special feature of the green. The given feet is perfectly adapted for a life in the lakes and wetlands. Question five, it's about the function. This type of feet is used for running, climbing, swimming, or perching. Your time's up. The correct answer is option B. This type of feet is found in woodpeckers and other tree climbing birds such as nuthatches also. It, is help, it helps birds to climb the trees very efficiently. Question number six. Match the beak with the type of food which a bird can eat. Option A is insects, B is plants, C is fruits, and D is grains. Your time's up. Look at the answer. The given beak is of the copper smith barbet, which is a predominantly a fruit eater. The copper smith barbet can eat three times its own body weight every day. Question number seven match the beak with the food. Option A insects. Option B Omnivore, which is a mix of everything. Option C, rats and mice and other animals. Option D, fish. Your time's up. The correct answer is option D. The beak is of a common kingfisher. It eats fish. Let's move on to question number eight. Match the beak with the food. Option A is fish. Option B is fruits. Option D is rats and other small animals. Option D is insects. Your time's up. Let's look at the answer. 
the week is of Rx packet, one of the beautiful birds which everybody likes and it predominantly eats insects. The correct answer is option D. Let's move on to question number nine. Match the beak with the food. Option A, fish. B, fruits. C, rat and other small animals. Option D, insects. Your time's up. And the correct answer is option A. The beak is of a beautiful grey heron, which everybody can see in the wetlands near their homes. And it predominantly eats fish. The correct answer is option A. Moving on to question 10, the last question of round 3. Option A, fish. Option B, omnivore, which means it eat, eats everything. Option C, rats, mice, and other small animals. Option D, insects. Your time's up. The correct answer is The beak is of an eagle and eagles hunt predominantly rats, mice and other small animals, whichever is preferred in their diet, such as snakes, etc. So we have concluded three rounds and now we are moving to Round four. Uh, Ganeshwar, someone has raised their hand. Okay. So, um, I see Devika has raised her hand. Oh, they, uh, now there are quite a few hands raised. Okay. So, um, I've changed the settings of the chat uh, so that they can message everyone. Uh, if you if anyone has any doubts, queries, comments, please can you quickly type them in the chat box before we move on to the next round? Quickly, any doubts? Will special characters after the answer cause the answer to be rejected? Yes, so like we said in the beginning, uh, you just have to type A, B, C or D. So... Uh, Any related to the quiz, related to how the quiz is conducted, not to the questions specifically, that Maybe if we have time towards the end, we can take a few questions later. Any doubt related to playing the quiz for now? Okay. Uh, again, asking everyone. So these doubts, guys, we can take towards the end. Why birds do not transmit COVID or whether kingfishers eat lizards too. Okay, I think uh, everyone's clear as to how we need to play the quiz. If we have any other extra questions, uh, we'll probably have 10 minutes towards the end where we can address the other questions.
I'm yes. just seeing the settings to host only again in the chat. We can move to the next round, Ganesha. Okay. So round four will be choose the odd bird out. You will be given four species out of which one will be the odd bird. Let's have a look at the instructions. Yeah. The questions will not be based on the color or size of the birds. However, it will be based on their habitats, different behaviors, feeding habits, migratory status, whether the bird is endemic or non-endemic, etc. This round is more like an aptitude round, which generally you will have attended in quiz competitions in your schools, possibly. Let's move on to question number one. I'll repeat the instruction once again. You will have to reason out why that bird is odd bird based on whether it's a habitat or behavior or it's due to feeding or whether it's the bird is migratory or not and things like that. Let's move on to question number one of round four. Choose the odd bird out. A, spot bill duck. Option B, little egret. C, black headed ibis. D, Wilson's storm petrel. Your time's up. The correct answer is option D, Wilson's Storm Petrel. The other three birds, Spot Bill Duck, Little Egret, and the Black Headed Ibis are all found in inland water bodies, whereas the Wilson's Storm Petrel is a pelagic bird which can be found only in the season oceans. Let's move on to question number two. Choose the odd bird out. Coppersmith barbet, great hornbill, blue-tailed bee eater, option D, rose ring parakeet. Your time's up. The correct answer is option C, blue tail bee eater. Because coppersmith barbet, great hornbill and rose ring parakeets are frugivores, whereas the blue tail bee eater is an insectivore. There is also Another angle of looking at the question, blue tail bee eaters build their nests on river banks, whereas the other three birds build their nests in tree holes. Either of the way you look at the question, the answer is option C, blue tail bee eater. Ganeshwar. Yeah. How much time are you giving per question? 20 seconds. Okay. So for each question in round four, we will be giving 20 seconds for you to figure out the answer. Let's move on to question number three. 
choose the odd bird out. Option A, western yellow wagtail. Option B, gray wagtail. Option C, white wagtail. And D, white broad wagtail. Your time's up. And the correct answer is option D, white broad wagtail. Because white broad wagtail is the only resident wagtail species found in India. All other wagtails, gray wagtail, yellow wagtail, citrine wagtail, forest wagtail, all other species migrate from other countries. Let's move on to question four. Choose the odd bird out. Option A, redneck falcon. Option B, shikra. Option C, crested serpent eagle. Option D, Indian vulture. Your time's up. The correct answer is Indian vulture because redneck falcon, shikra, and crested serpent eagles generally hunt their prey, whereas the Indian vulture is predominantly a scavenger which eats dead animals. Let's move to question five. Choose the odd bird out. Option A, greater cockle. B, common hawk cuckoo. C, Asian coil. And D, pied cuckoo. Your time's up. The correct answer is option A, greater cockle. Though the greater cockle belongs to the cuckoo family, it can build its own nest. However, common hawk cuckoo, Asian quail, and pied cuckoo lay their eggs in the nest of other birds, such as babblers and crows. The correct answer is option A, greater cockle. Question number six, choose the odd bird out. Option A, red bottle lapwing. Option B, black winged stilt. Option C, Indian robin. Option D, ashy crowned sparrow lark. Your time's up. Let's see the answer. The correct answer is option C. Why? Because Indian robin does not build its nest on ground. It builds its nest in bushes and shrubs, whereas the red wattle lapping, black winged stilt, and ashy crowned sparrow lark lay their eggs on the ground. The correct answer is option C, Indian Robin. Let's move on to question number seven. Choose the odd bird out. Option A, whiskered turn. Option B, great Indian bustard. 
ऑप्शन सी इंडियन स्कीमा ऑप्शन डी कॉमन किंगफिशर Your time's up, and the correct answer is the Great Indian Bustard. Option B. The Great Indian Bustard lives in grasslands, whereas the whiskered tern, Indian skimmer, and common kingfisher are associated with water bodies. Let's move on to question number eight. choose the odd bird out option a spotted dove option b laughing dove option c emerald dove and d nilgiri wood pigeon your times up let's see the answer the correct answer is option d nilgiri wood pigeon because the spotted dove laughing dove and asian emerald dove are all distributed all over the indian subcontinent or perhaps sign in some of the southeast asian countries whereas the nilgiri wood pigeon is the only bird in the four options which is endemic to the western ghats of india let's move on to question number 9 option a forest owlet option b spotted owlet option c indian scops owl option d brown hawk owl if you had attended our no it owl lecture conducted by early bird and the talk given by dr prachi mehta you could easily answer this question option a forest owlet b spotted owlet c indian scops owl and d brown hawk owl your times up the correct answer is option a forest owlet because out of the four given species forest owlet is the only bird which is diurnal in nature which means this owlet is active during daytime let's move on to the last question of round 4 yeah choose the odd bird out barred button quail option a b house sparrow c pheasant tailed jasana option d greater painted snipe if you guys had attended part 1 of this quiz you could guess the answer your times up the correct answer is option b house sparrows why because both the male and female house sparrows share the parental duties which means they help raise their young together whereas in button quails jasanas and painted snipes only the male incubates and takes care of the young 
female leaves the place after laying eggs this statement was already given as a quiz question in part 1 of are you a vice quacker we have completed four rounds guys we have come to the last round of the quiz and that will be match the call with the bird i will play the call of a bird and you will have to choose either of the four options let's move on to question number 1 of round 5 your times up uh when i sure the call was very faint can you play that again oh yeah sure maybe play the call twice uh, yeah sure sure yeah yeah okay. i'll do that i'll just increase the okay we can see the answers see yeah Sorry about that. No, that's okay. Ganesh, you might have to remove your uh, uh, microphone, this thing, so that it can be heard properly. Okay. Ganesh, uh, sorry to interrupt. You might have to select optimize audio when you share the screen. Enable computer sound, something like that. Stop sharing. Share it again, and select uh, enable computer sound. it was audible guys you can uh, please type your answers now yeah. please send a b c or d to quiz answers your times up the correct answer is option c that's a call of the house sparrow a familiar bird which lives even within our houses 
Let's move on to question number two. Your time's up. The correct answer is option D, the Indian roller. Let's move on to question three. I think that was fairly a long call to be played only once. You can send your answers now. Your time's up. Let's move on to Question number four and see the answer before that. The correct answer for question number three is answer A. It is the call of white throat kingfisher. We'll move on to question number four.
Ganeshwar. Yeah. Uh, please uh, uh, talk only when the call has stopped playing. Yes. Okay. Mm. Otherwise, your sound gets muffled. Yeah. Sure. Thanks. Your time's up for question four. And the answer is answer B, the Indian paradise flycatcher. It is also the state bird of Madhya Pradesh. Let's move on to question five. Option B, Indian Simita Babbler. Option C, Jungle Babbler. And D, Black Hooded Oriole. You can type your answers. Your time's up. And the correct answer is option C. It is the call of jungle babbler, which are also called Sadbai. They generally live in groups of seven or more birds and they forage in, under the on the ground, picking up leaf litter in search of food. Let's move on to question number six. Jungle Owlet and B Barn Owl C Rocky Gull Owl and D Indian Scops Owl. Your time's up. Let's move on to question seven. And for this, the answer is, it is the call of the Indian Scops Owl. The correct answer is option D. Let's move on to question number seven. Option 
A, Jelly Twisted Munia. Option D, Jordan's Leaf Bird. Option C, Black Winged Stilt. Option D, White Broad Wagtail. Your time's up. The answer is white broad wagtail option D. And quickly moving on to question number eight. Hey Ganeshwar, also don't repeat the call. Yeah, I'm not repeating it. Nice. Okay. Yeah. A. Tickles Blue Flycatcher, B. White Broad Wagtail, C. Copper Smith Barbet, and D. Oriental Magpie Robin. Your time's up. Let's move. And the answer is the call of Tickles Blue Flycatcher. Quickly moving on to question number nine. <laughs> Option B, Lesser Golden Back Woodpecker, C, Eurasian Coot, and D, Rufus Tree Pie. Your time's up. Let's see the last question of the quiz. And this is the call of White Breasted Water Hen. Moving on to question number. 10 of the last round quickly. No. Your time's up. The correct answer is option B. Little Creep and that brings us Uh, Ganeshwar's screen seems to have frozen. Let's just wait till he gets connected again.
So, but any other questions? Was, questions are all done, right? Yeah, but that was the end of the quiz. And uh, yeah, we've we finished right, I think, just maybe two minutes above the time limit. So, um, we had uh, intended to try and announce some results from the earlier rounds. Uh, but I think uh, that won't be possible uh, because we want to verify and ensure that we haven't missed out anyone's, uh, you know, answers. So we want to make sure that it's absolutely correct before we announce the results. So we'll uh, announce it later this evening and um, uh, there will be some prizes and uh, we have all your email IDs. So uh, we will you know get back to you should uh, misha should you open up the chat yeah so i've opened the chat up if you guys have any um, questions or comment comments uh, besides <laughs> maybe uh, comments like the questions were ambiguous because we can't really do anything about that so the answers of the first two questions of round five could be seen, will they still be considered? Yes, because if we give the same points or if we deduct the same points, it's going, it's going to be the same thing if we mark or don't mark. Unless there are people who haven't seen the answers. So Garima, uh, someone is asking, that the answers of the first two questions of round five could be seen because uh, when Ganesha was changing his oh, settings. Okay. Uh, well, that's okay. I mean, we can still give the points for the right answer. How to get connected to this with this org organization? I'm guessing. So um, yeah, we have uh, an email ID that is early bird at NCF. Let me just quickly type it early bird at ncfindia.org. We're also on Facebook. Uh, we're also on Instagram. We're also on Twitter. So if you need any updates, uh, you can follow us there. But if you have any questions for us, uh, you can write to us at early bird at ncfindia.org. Uh, someone asked, uh, where will the answers be announced? Uh, we have all your email IDs because all of you have registered. So we'll also send you an email and we, uh, Garima will be announced the answers on, yeah, I think we'll just send uh, everyone an email. And we'll hopefully uh, try to tally the results either by today or tomorrow. Will the prize be given by age group? Uh, no, we're not uh, dividing prizes on the basis of age groups. Was there any negative marking? No, there was no negative marking. Someone is saying, uh, nice quiz, enjoyed it, learned a lot. Though I got a lot of questions wrong, that's exactly the right spirit somewhere. Uh, where can we put the feedback? Like I said, uh, I've written our email ID in the chat box, earlybird at ncf-india.org. You can connect with us there. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. We're called Early Bird. Our prize is going to be distributed on the basis of round wise scores. Garima? Uh, 
Hello, Karima. Uh, yeah, Misha. So, uh, uh, no, we will give prizes based on the overall scores, uh, not uh, round wise. Uh, but uh, we'll see uh, depending on the answers. You know, if it was if most people found it too difficult, then we'll decide to give some round wise prizes also. We'll see based on uh, the responses. We have recorded everyone's responses to every question. So yeah. don't worry, we will uh, get back to you with the uh, results, the winners. Yeah, we'll also uh, probably send the correct uh, answers and uh, uh, the division of marks once we send you the results. When is the next quiz? Uh, well, uh, we don't know yet, but if you want one, please uh, drop us a feedback. And if we have enough, takers for a, an, another quiz, we might do one sometime in the future. Uh, there might be some questions that might be a little contentious. If you guys have any queries regarding the questions, you can write a mail to us and we'll try to uh, solve the ambiguity of the question together. Abhisheka has uh, posted the links to all our social media handles on in the chat box. And uh, so we like uh, we said that this is the second part of the quiz. We've already done one quiz before, which is on YouTube. The link to which again is in the chat box. Uh, please uh, go and uh, subscribe to our channel because we also have all the other talks during uh, the lockdown, the recordings of which are up on YouTube. You can check the talks out. We also have talks in other languages, Telugu, Tamil, Kannada, and Hindi, along with the first part of the quiz. Okay, I think uh, we can close uh, the session now. Thank you everyone for joining us. I hope you guys learned a lot. Please don't feel disheartened if you didn't win anything. At the end of the day, it's all about learning and not winning. And please stay connected to us and write to us if you have any queries. Thank you.